What's going on, everybody? Sugar and Spice Topics. So Michael Jackson had a recent victory. It's looking good in the favor of his estate, you know, and his lawyers and family. Um, these media in this movement, the Time's Up, Me Too, and Mute, these movements really think that they're going to get away with defaming people's character. Even though Michael Jackson has passed away, he still has family that is hurt by these accusations. Here you have Wade Robson who testified under oath that he was not being violated by Michael Jackson when he was alive. But as he grew up, Michael Jackson also is the person that hurt him. Where is the parents? Like to me, it's like, where are the parents? There's no way you can bypass that. He shouldn't be with no grown up. Your parents should have never allowed that. Why can't they put the responsibility on the guardian of these children if they are accusing people of violating them? They should never let their children live with an adult. You want money. You want what comes with Michael Jackson. All the fame, the attention, popularity, but then after he's gone, oh, he's the bad guy. Again, it's not fair to the family. Here is Paris Jackson, Michael Jackson's daughter. She was offended. She was affected by these accusations. The media put out a whole HBO docu-series of leaving Neverlands of Michael Jackson. That hurts his sisters, brothers, mother, father, and his children, of course. And nobody cares about the harm they cause when they make these accusations. Again, where are the parents of all of these alleged victims? You go on oath, you say one thing, which you are questioned and weighed, come to find out your testimony does not line up or you a flat out liar or you're under perjury because you are not speaking truth. And that is what the jury finds eventually. So I'm going to read an article um, about what's going on, give you all a heads up or, you know, some information regarding what's going on with Michael Jackson. And then I have a video clip of his lawyers of his estate, Michael Jackson's estate. I'm only going to show a few of them talking. Well, I think it's all of them saying a little bit of something, but I'm not going to play the entire video, but it will be in the description box. Jackson estate denounces leaving Neverlands Emmys win as lawsuit against HBO continues by Matthew Phelan. September 20th, 2019. Here's a picture of Michael Jackson and Wade Robson. HBO will likely enter an arbitration with Michael Jackson's estate over its four-hour documentary, Leaving Neverland. After hearing a tentative ruling somewhat neurotically issued by U.S. District Judge George Wu in federal court Thursday morning. Lots of these issues are so close, according to Wu, who resides over the Central District of California. Either side will probably appeal. Maybe it doesn't make a difference what I do. The documentary, which was released to Universal Universal acclaim in January and recently won a primetime Emmy presents in laborious and emotionally rich detail the allegations of two men, Wade Robson and James Safechuck, who claimed they were sexually abused by Jackson for years during their childhood. While Jackson's estate publicly describes the film as financially motivated and a rehash of data and discredited allegations ahead of its premiere at the 2019 Sundance Film Festival, it was ultimately unable to pursue defamation charges as those statutes do not apply to the deceased. Instead, the estate filed a $1 million lawsuit in February, a week before the film's television premiere on HBO, arguing that the network's decision to air the doc violated a 27-year-old non-disparagement agreement dating back to the channel, cable channel's 1992 deal for Jackson's Dangerous Tour concert special. As HBO's lead attorney, Theodore Boltris, continued to argue in court Thursday, the defense team believes the case, including arbitration, should be dismissed under anti-slap laws designed to protect parties from strategic laws against public participation brought about by financially powerful planets. It was filed to chill speech, Boltris said. It was filed to tell the world, don't talk about child abuse. A company like HBO may also be able to fight back and move forward. Others might not be able to do that. With his decision expected to be finalized in the next 10 days, Wu did not particularly voice sympathy for this line of reasoning from the network. You're a big company, they're a wealthy estate, as Wu put it on HBO's legal team on Thursday. It's a clash of the titans. 
Michael Jackson says stay in the pop stars most rabid fans have been pushing back against the documentary and its claims for nearly an entirety of 2019. Beginning in the days before the film's first police protected screening at Sundance in January, diehard fans of the King of Pop took to social media hoping to compel the festival to drop the film from its roster. And both alleged victims Robson and Safe Chuck as well as, as well as the film's director Dan Reed reporting getting death threats. Over the summer, three Michael Jackson fan clubs in France fought a suit against Robson and Safe Chuck under a French law forbidding the public denunciation of a dead person and seeking a mostly symbolic remuneration of one euro from each. Awesome to hear, Judge. We'll basically not siding with HBO because we have also the Lifetime docuseries that defamed R. Kelly. The media got a hold and completely went against other celebrities that still supported R. Kelly and pressured them until they broke and until they denounced supporting R. Kelly. Um, I bring these two up because both of them obviously suffer the same types of allegations with the same aftermaths of the media in the world being under the public court of a public opinion. Um, so it's awesome to see the fans fight back has had a positive effect on the fairness and just of these artists basically so here is that video that i was telling you all about there's clips here it's very interesting this is michael jackson state i'm sorry estate lawyers talking check it out so you had a documentary done in complete secrecy because they didn't want any other narrative you had accusations from two men who had a financial interest in the outcome um, and from two men who had previously testified under perjury exactly the opposite of what they said in the documentary. Now, on top of that, the fans and press overseas in England and even in Moscow have begun to point out numerous inconsistencies and flat-out lies that contained in the documentary. I had written an article on cognitive biases that people uh, might have been exposed to in evaluating the Michael Jackson documentary. And I, I submitted this article to a major, uh, to, to a major uh, media outlet. And they came back with, uh, we're, we're really, uh, we love this article, we want to publish it, it's great science, good information, but we're afraid that you might be victim blaming. And I said, well, can you point out what's victim blaming? And they said, well, you pointed out in the article that the alleged victims gave two different types of evidence and that they, they pro if, if what they're saying is true now, that they lied under oath. And I said, I, I did point that out and I also pointed out that that doesn't mean that they were not victims, it just means that there were two points and two bits of information. Uh, and they, they wouldn't accept that. I, I mean, I, I, you know, the fact that somebody could say it's career suicide for you to freely express your educated viewpoint is the problem right there. It is that fear runs our society from a corporate perspective. Fear runs our society from a, from a, a personal social perspective. And when there's a wave that goes in one direction, people want to go along with the wave. They don't want to risk upsetting the apple cart. And, and so I, I would say to you, I mean, this is how we became America. This is how we got the First Amendment. I would say to you, all points of view are great points of view. All points of view are important points of view. Now, if somebody says something about a living person, ultimately there are laws of defamation. So if the statement's egregious enough, that person can sue the other person, go into a courtroom, and get a judgment one way or the other. But what exists today in our society is defamation does not protect the deceased. When this when this film came out, the following thoughts came to my mind. First of all, he was already accused by somebody when he was alive who testified. And you might remember Michael was ultimately acquitted, similar charges. And one of the central witnesses for Michael in that case was one of the two people now accusing Michael. So if I'm deciding who I want to believe and who I don't want to believe, and I'm in a more structured setting, and you get up and make the accusations, then I say to you, wait, five years ago, or whatever the number is, weren't you under oath, and 
Didn't you testify exactly the opposite? So at that point, I at least get to weigh the credibility. Um, the full video is in the description. John Brinker brought up a good point. He basically talked about leaving Neverlands, the documentary, with strategize and plan and secrecy in order, and this is what I'm thinking, it's because they wanted to protect their idea and in doing so, they strategized and planned and came together and narrated a story. You only can narrate something that's a documentary. So I wanna know from y'all, why do you think that is? Why do you think they go in secrecy? And tell me, how does that affect Michael Jackson's family? How does all of this, this whole HBO document, documentary, how does that affect Michael Jackson's family? And he talks about writing an article and presenting that to major media. He was writing on cognitive biases and how people evaluated the narrative or the documentary that they were exposed to. How he evaluated that in that major network, they denied him. That major um, media outlet denied and rejected his idea, saying that he was basically, let's just call it, he was victim blaming. So Dr. Srini's like, how is that victim blaming? Can you elaborate? And they talking about these two stories basically are different. That's what they're referring to, they're different stories. Basically, Dr. Srini is saying, um, these alleged victims told one story in court under oath completely different from what they said on the documentary again that's the narrative if you think about a play you have a narrator someone that tells the story and it shouldn't be telling a story it should be telling what happened your account do you think the world feels about michael jackson now just think about it just feel it out how do you feel even if you didn't watch that documentary how do you feel hearing about these allegations surfacing and resurfacing. How does that make you feel about Michael Jackson? I'm asking you this question so you can evaluate the cognitive biases of what's been exposed to you. That's what Dr. Trini was doing, but they rejected it. To me, it's crazy how you can reject that. Media outlet rejects truths and facts because it was facts that they told two different stories, the two alleged victims. They rejected them, but they don't reject the feigning. I see articles all the time. Y'all see articles every day about R. Kelly defaming his character, calling him the disgraced R. Kelly. It's okay for them to defame and, and just slander the man, slander his name, call him disgraced, call him pedophile in the major media outlets, but they won't put an article out, uh, basically just a good evaluating article, I mean evaluation, cognitive biases, like what's up with that? They reject that. We know what they're doing. They only have one agenda. They want to tear down Michael Jackson's hard earned legacy. They want to tear down these celebrities that are have worked hard and put work into their craft we bought their music, we praised them and put them on high esteem. We love them. They, why do they want to change that? Why do they want to change that? What would make them want to disgrace these people? What would make them want to be a part of it? Why, did, why couldn't that media article listen to Dr. Srini's idea and publish his idea? What was the harm for that? You know, what was the harm in that? Anyway, I'm tongue tied enough, y'all. Thanks for listening to this video. Tell me what y'all think about the the uh, video and you know how does that make you feel? How do how how do you feel about Michael Jackson now after leaving Neverland, after the media defamed him, and after HBO defamed him? That's all I got for y'all now. Talk to you soon. Peace.